Hi, my name is Kumiko. Thank you, Kano Craft, for inviting me to do this video, A Day in the Life of Jura. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm originally from Japan. Uh, now I live in Okusotsuche. I've been making my jewelry for over 20 years. I trained in Barcelona, in Spain, and fourth time in Germany. I usually sell my jewelry through the galleries uh, in UK and also from my website. Okay, let's go and have a look my jewelry and how I work. So the uh, example of my jewelry, I use a technique called chasing and repose with my design. I use a pitch and a hammer with a chasing tools to create the volume. Individual pieces are all unique and one of the kind. Everything is one of uh, very bespoke jewelry. This one is bracelet and it, it, the technique is the same use the chasing to create the volume and also i like to have texture always uh, my pieces have uh, some kind of texture to go with and also i've been working with a wax called mitsuro which is made out of beeswax it's like this uh, beeswax and resin and this is an ancient Japanese silversmith technique. And I, unfortunately, it's dying technique. So I'd like to promote this. Also, this is the result of the beeswax jewelry. So you could see the lines being created from the beeswax. And this one is brooch i put a bit of 24 karat gold onto the silver to enhance the movement i love the emptiness of this jewelry and the movement and also i like to combine these two old but beautiful technique together into my jewelry. So this one is the example of two combined. This ball, I called it chestnut. <laughs> it's um, used the technique of chasing and the pose. And the clasp that I use is a mitsuro, mitsuro for this. So at the moment, the two technique is individually separated in the distance but i'd like to combine somehow be closer both together which is my aim so yes this is uh, it yes yeah, so i'll show you something else what happening to my day okay thank you so this is my little world of jewelry making okay i usually start with a cup of coffee or tea or just hot water to start with and then I do the stretch and then just because I do have um, backache and it helps me to loosen up my my shoulders and neck okay let's go stretch by myself and see you in a moment. I've been stretched and ready to go and nice and nicely loosened. So first of all I'm gonna put my apron on to to get to the working mode and I'm starting with left hand drawing. I'm right, right handed generally but um, my secondary art teacher told me that if you use left-handed or left-handed person are more creative and if you use the left-handed you use the right brain which is a creative side of your brain and I wanted to be very creative so for a while I wanted to be a left-handed person so still I'm doing a bit of left-handed drawing to bring my artistic brain going okay
Let's go. So I decided to have some cup of tea, Japanese tea, before I start. This is nice green tea. Have one for me, maybe two for me, and one for pot. And don't put hot boiling water, just 18 centuries, not too hot. And just wait. Okay, this is my left handed book that I've been using. So sometimes I just draw flowers or human body stuff. And sometimes just like a scrunched paper and things like that. And today I was thinking to draw uh, my chiseling hammer, which is my old mate. So I'm going to use my left hand to draw this. Okay, let's go. Okay, I usually just draw a little line like that using my left hand as well. So see, I could do the straight line and then use this now. Very good. So this is my left-handed drawing of my hammer. Okay, done. And today is May. do the next uh, stuff which is like calligraphy which is um, I, I'm using my my brush and Japanese ink to do um, like a drawing with the brush so I do use I do do like this just do random drawings with Japanese ink so this is Japanese ink, it's concentrated in a, like a little stone. Uh, put some in there. And then just... Dab into this. So this is a concentrated ink, Japanese ink. It's like a pure ink. I mean, pure coal in a way. It's like a cousin of diamond, I would imagine. I fairly like to have a lighter ink rather than very thick ink, but it's, it's like a personal preference. You could do whatever you like. I think it's done. Let's see. bought this one from beach so this nice weight for my juniper my drawing and just see what kind of lines I make today first first paper it just you use the 
mood of your day just to see what kind of lines you create just see what happens and then maybe use another paper those lines which is have those space in between and I emphasize those lines in between those are more important than actual line itself so this lines is very important for me to clear my mind as well as um, the technique I'm, I'm using at the moment with uh, beeswax jewelry, which creates those lines. And for example, if I do that, I drag to create that line with my beeswax jewelry. Those organic movement is unvolunteer effect of my brush and paper and without me thinking too much it's it's been created it's just like a miracle happened in within my hand and brush and the paper mm, that actually does look similar to one of the mm. one of those earrings you've made yeah so these were my literal early in the morning so yoga left-handed drawing and a bit of Japanese ink uh, brush stroking. So I've been making my Mitsuro wax uh, which is beeswax jewelry. It's a Japanese wax that I'm using. Uh, I make by myself the this, this Mitsuro wax which is beeswax and resin and the paraffin uh, mixture and it it is very temperamental so it depends on the weather it's the uh, the quantity slightly changes and um, yeah you have to sort of use your body temperature to make it soft so your hand need to be constantly warmed i use the candle pot and um, little tea lights to warm my hands to do this yeah, so it, this is nearly ready some people do it bigger size but i've i've got very small hands so i i do prefer to do a smaller scale so keep warming up my hands are very cold me most so when I was drawing this that is correspond my design that line that create my drawing is now became a 3d of the wax and sometimes just they dictate me rather than the design itself it, it is very very rewarding and sometimes when I was putting my mitro wax, I forget to breathe. And uh, but the reward that you they gave me is unbeatable. just made a line outline with a hammer so it's got nice outlines there and now the metal is getting harder so 
So I'm gonna nail it and then put back to the pitch. Now I nailed it and nice and nice and soft. I'm just gonna put it in the pickle a little bit because it's just a bit too black. So while we were waiting for the other metals to be cleaned, this one came out from the pickle. Uh, this is oh, again the same. This is the chasing method I use, te chasing technique I use. So it's volumed, uh, but the other side is empty so it's it's nice and volume but it's light and this one has the like a slit or the cut out those are similar shape but it's not actually identical i do tend to make it sort of individual as i can but it's sort of nice shape to wear maybe you could do it the other, the other way as well, maybe this one's inwards, or this one is out. Anyway, yeah, so it's a little slit with 18 karat gold. That's oh, again the chasing and the posse with a bit of texture, so this needs to be clean. So nice, now it's clean enough for chasing again. So, I did can you see the lines? They're chased around the metal so it's buckets like that so now I'm gonna make a volume so I'm gonna attach to the pitch chasing pitch to make an a volume People try to get rid of the hummus, hammer texture to make it smooth, but I quite like to have the, the process. I think people tend, tend to make it nice smooth surface. It's probably that's more popular choice. Personally, I love the I love this texture that is always my jewelry has got texture, very heavily textured. It's gonna go longer. <laughs> so maybe better to just speed up um, the video. Probably it's a good idea because it's not gonna finish today. I think we could do a bit more because the metal is not tinny yet. I could hear the higher pitch. That is a sign. No, please, anel me, make me soft. They're saying no anymore. Can you hear the difference? It's a bit tinier. Saying no, you need to warm me up, otherwise, I'm gonna break. So, nearly done. So, this time I need to annul it and then flatten it again and see what happens. Okay, so it's come out voluntarily because they said no, no, no anymore, please, allow me. 
and this one is still stuck to this so I'm just gonna pull it not supposed to be just help a little bit Now I'm going to manual them and then back to this again and see what happens anymore. It's kind of silversmith rather than goldsmith in this method because a lot of silversmith people do making a dishes or a cup or even spoon. They they do make a volume from the flat seat of metal, which is uh, fascinating. You know, I I'm doing a very small scale compared to them, but it's very similar sort of method method itself yes this sound that i heard when i first seen people doing a chasing and i really like the method and also the smell of i don't know it's resin i think it's resin inside so it's the smell of resin which is again i love it so many people might not like the smell because it's quite strong but I do like it. Sometimes I do put the yoga mat on the side so I could just do the stretch. Sometimes I just need a little stretch because it's very, very, um, what's the word? Intense movement and it's quite um, hard work. I think it's getting there. They're going to be my earrings or circle sealies or a bit of texture of hammer texture rather than very smooth it's a bit more brilliant than before maybe quite boring that listening to this sound just but if you wanna if you want to do it i think it's fascinating because every every single hammer stroke you are making a history almost a story onto your, your jewelry and it is so so good feeling like this is nicely like an eggy egg shape kind of so i just annealed it and need to be cleaned a little bit because it's bit dirty i'm just a bit worried because it's oxidized if i hammer it too much that might stay on on the surface of the metal so i'm just gonna pickle them in, in the pickle pot it's nice to be nice and clean so whilst waiting for the metal to be cleaned in the pickle i decided to just to do the rice uh, for tonight with curry so this is my, my cooking, nice cooking pot. So my daughter has come, come back, so I'm going to just do a bit more than usual. <laughs> okay, rice is prepped, so just going to wait another 30 minutes and then we'll be ready for cooking. So this is what happened so far. I hammered it on this side. so has a volume in the other side so it's kind of sort of oval shape but i want double the size of this double the volume of this so i need to hammer it a bit more but also before that i need to flat the outline otherwise you don't know exactly how far you are hammering it so yeah both two need to be done again Can you see the sound, the difference? Before it was like a bit tinny, now it's a bit dull. So that means it's, the metal is flattened. Okay, so this one is flat. Yeah, now we're gonna do this one. Exactly the same. Can you hear the difference? It's tinny. And getting a duller sound compared to before, still a bit tinny and it's a bit deeper sound so those two pieces are now flat this side so I could see the real volume of the metal that I created, hammered it 
but I want a bit more. So here we go. We're gonna just put it back to the pitch. I've been hammering a lot today, so I'm gonna finish now. And uh, yeah, it was great. So thank you for Kano Craft for giving me this opportunity. It was daunting to start with, but it's nice to discover myself and learning about myself. As um, I've been trying to think of, think about why am I doing this? What am I doing? Uh, so it is quite nice to discover myself, which is which was bonus for me. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm so sorry that I couldn't finish this piece today. It's, it's nearly there, but I want to, to do a bit more volume and more texture. I will upload it onto my website, which is www.fieldoftree.co.uk. Field of Tree name came from my surname Kihara. Ki means tree and Hara means field and my my daughter and I decided to call this poetic translation of my surname my new adventure of my jewelry making and also I will post it to my uh, Instagram as well which is Coco underscore Kumiko Kihara Jewelry, it's that thing in Instagram. Coco, I've been called by my student in special needs school. They call me Coco and I quite like it. Yeah, so it was it was my sub name <laughs> in my Instagram. I am very excited to uh, tell you that I'm doing um, residency with Vanilla Ink in Banff in Scotland this year. Pantries very close to the seaside, stone throw away from the workshop, which is very exciting to know. It will be so inspirational place to work uh, in very close to the mother nature like that. So I will keep posted there what's going to to happen. As especially the my new collection will be something like sea uh, seaside environment involved so it'll be quite good so i'm gonna wrap up for today so thank you kano craft for inviting me to do this video i highly recommend subscribing the, the youtube channel just because there's so many good tips and tricks of jewelry making like soldering making a bee threading tools to buy it was so many of them it's so good i i'm excited about my future of jewelry jewelry making and I hope people could join me how I progress as an artist thank you so much bye